Gun legislation in Canada is largely about licensing and registration. Handgun registration became law in 1934, and automatic firearms registration was added in 1951. In 1969, laws classified firearms as non-restricted, restricted and prohibited. Starting in 1979, individuals who wished to acquire firearms were required to obtain a Firearms Acquisition Certificate, FAC, from their local police agency. From 1995 to 2012, all firearms owners were required to possess a firearms license, either a POW, PAL, FAC, or a minor's license, and all firearms were required to be registered. In April 2012, the requirement to register non-restricted firearms was dropped in every province and territory, except for Quebec, the requirement for all firearms owners to possess a valid firearms license remains law. In 2015, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled against Quebec, entirely eliminating non-restricted registry records. History of Firearm Laws in Canada Controls on civilian use of firearms date from the early days of Confederation, when justices of the peace could impose penalties for carrying a handgun without reasonable cause. Amendments to the Criminal Code between the 1890s and the 1970s introduced a series of minor controls on firearms. In the late 1970s, controls of intermediate strength were introduced. In the mid-1990s, significant increases in controls occurred. A 1996 study showed that Canada was in the mid-range of firearm ownership when compared with eight other Western nations. Nearly 22% of Canadian households had at least one firearm, including 2.3% of households possessing a handgun. As of September 2010, the Canadian Firearms Programme recorded a total of 1,831,327 valid firearm licenses, which is roughly 5.4% of the Canadian population. The four most licensed provinces are Ontario, Quebec, Alberta, and British Columbia. In 2005 almost 3% of households in Canada possessed handguns, compared to 18% of U.S. households that possessed handguns. In 2005 almost 16% of households in Canada possessed firearms of some kind. The following is a summary of the history of gun control laws in Canada. The federal parliament instituted a system of gun control in the Northwest Territories in 1885 to hinder the Red River Rebellion for Métis rights. Permission in writing from the territorial government was needed to possess any firearm, other than a smoothbore shotgun, and also ammunition. Possession of a firearm or ammunition without the necessary permit was an offense, and could lead to the forfeiture of the firearm and ammunition. These gun control provisions applied to all of what is now Alberta, Saskatchewan, parts of Manitoba, the current Northwest Territories, Yukon, and Nunavut. The Criminal Code, enacted in 1892, required individuals to have a permit to carry a pistol unless the owner had cause to fear assault or injury. Not until 1935 was it considered an offense to sell a pistol to anyone under 16. Vendors who sold handguns had to keep records, including purchaser's name, the date of sale and a description of the gun. In the 1920s, permits became necessary for all firearms newly acquired by foreigners. Legislation in 1934 required the registration of handguns with records identifying the owner, the owner's address and the firearm. Registration certificates were issued and records kept by the Commissioner of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP, or by other police forces designated by Provincial Attorneys General. In 1947, the offence of constructive murder was added to the Criminal Code for offences resulting in death, when the offender carried a firearm. This offence was struck down as unconstitutional by the Supreme Court of Canada in a 1987 case called R. V. Valencourt. Automatic firearms were added to the category of firearms that had to be registered in 1951. The registry system was centralized under the commissioner of the RCMP. In 1969, Bill C-150 created categories of non-restricted, restricted and prohibited firearms. 
Police were also given preventive powers of search and seizure by judicial warrant if they had grounds to believe that firearms that belonged to an individual endangered the safety of society. In 1977, Bill C-51 required Firearms Acquisition Certificates FACS, to purchase any firearm, and introduced controls on the selling of ammunition. Applicants were required to pass a basic criminal record check before receiving the FAC. In 1991, Bill C-17 was introduced, coming into force between 1992 and 1994. It required FAC applicants to pass a safety course in addition to a thorough background check, and to wait a minimum of 28 days after applying before an FAC could be issued. It also created new criminal code offenses, new definitions for prohibited and restricted weapons, and new regulations for firearms dealers. It increased penalties for firearm-related crimes. It clearly outlined regulations for firearms storage, handling and transportation. A major focus of C-17 was the control of military and paramilitary firearms. It created orders prohibiting or restricting most paramilitary rifles and some types of non-sporting ammunition. It prohibited firearms that had been converted to avoid a 1978 prohibition, exempting existing owners and it prohibited high-capacity magazines for automatic and semi-automatic firearms. It limited handguns to 10 rounds and most semi-automatic center-fire rifles to 5 rounds. In 1995, the Criminal Code was amended to include Bill C-68, the Firearms Act. It implemented a new central licensing system to replace the FAC system. It also required registration of all firearms and firearm license holders, banned short-barreled and small-caliber handguns, grandfathering in previous owners, and required a license to buy ammunition. Most of the bill's provisions came into force in 1998, and the registration of long guns became mandatory in 2003. Legislation was upheld by the Supreme Court in reference Re-Firearms Act, 2000. The FAC system was replaced with possession-only licenses, PALS, and Possession and Acquisition Licenses, PALS. Referring to Bill C-68, John Dixon, a former advisor to Deputy Minister of Justice John C. Tate, stated that the Firearms Act was part of a policy exercise by the Liberal Party of Canada so as to appear to be tougher on guns than Prime Minister Kim Campbell, and thus defeat her in the 1993 election. In 2001, the registration portion of Bill C-68 was implemented. The government asked for all firearms, including long guns, rifles and shotguns, to be registered. In 2003, the registration of long guns became mandatory. Failure to register a firearm now results in criminal charges. In 2006, although legislation was still in place, the government no longer asked long gun owners for a registration fee and an amnesty, until May 16, 2011 temporarily protected licensed owners of non-restricted firearms, or those whose licenses had expired since January 1, 2004, from prosecution for the possession of unregistered long guns. In November 2009, Bill C-391 passed second reading in the House of Commons by a vote of 164 to 137. If passed through the entire parliamentary process by the House and Senate, the bill would have abolished the requirement to register non-restricted long guns. While the proposed legislation was a private member's bill, it had the support of the Conservative government. The bill was referred to the House of Commons Committee on Public Safety for further action. However, after several months of hearings, the opposition majority on the committee recommended that no further action be taken to advance the bill. In September 2010 Bill C-391 failed to pass a third reading. On October 25, 2011, Public Safety Minister Vic Tobles introduced a bill to amend the Criminal Code and the Firearms Act, to abolish the long gun registry and destroy all records. On February 15, 2012, Bill C-19 passed third reading in the House of Commons, the motion to abolish the long gun registry passed 159 to 130 and Bill C-19 became law. In October 2014, 
Public Safety Minister Stephen Blaney and the Conservatives introduced another bill, Bill C-42, also known as the Common Sense Firearms Licensing Act. This legislation reduced required paperwork for the transportation of restricted firearms, held by licensed firearms owners, for certain lawful activities, such as transportation to a shooting range and to gunsmiths or gun shows. It lifted the ban on the Swiss Arms Classic Green Carbine, introduced a six-month grace period for firearms license renewals before an individual might otherwise face criminal charges and abolished the possession-only license, permitting holders of such licenses to enjoy the same full acquisition privileges as APAL holders. The legislation also implemented mandatory training for all first-time firearms license applicants. This legislation was passed and enacted in 2015, but the new Liberal government, formed in November 2015, pledged to reverse some of its provisions. Licensing of Firearms Owners All licensing and registration is managed by the RCMP's Canadian Firearms Program, CFP, under the Deputy Commissioner Policing Support Services, PSS. In the Canadian system, there are three classes of firearms and firearm licenses, non-restricted, restricted and prohibited. Prohibited firearms are not forbidden outright, as the name might imply, but their legal possession and acquisition are dependent upon their registration history and an individual's firearm license. As of December 1, 1998, the prohibited clause must be grandfathered to acquire or possess prohibited firearms. New prohibited licenses are available only at the discretion of the Chief Firearms Officer of the Province or the RCMP. See classification of firearms below for complete details on prohibited, restricted, and non-restricted firearms. Individuals who wish to possess or acquire firearms in Canada must have a valid possession acquisition, or possession only, license, PAL slash PAL, either of these licenses allows the licensee to purchase ammunition. The PAL is distributed exclusively by the RCMP and is generally obtained in the following three steps. Safety training. To be eligible to receive a PAL, all applicants must successfully complete the Canadian Firearms Safety Course, CFSC, for a non-restricted license, and the Canadian Restricted Firearms Safety Course, CRFSC, for a restricted license, the non-restricted class is a prerequisite to the restricted license. Each province slash territory's chief firearms officer publishes information on the locations and availability of these courses. Applying for a license, currently only one type of license is available to new applicants, the Possession Acquisition License, PAL. People can request a PAL by filling out Form CAFC 921. Security screening, background checks and reference interviews are performed. All applicants are screened, and a mandatory 28-day waiting period is imposed on first-time applicants, but final approval time may be longer. Licenses are typically valid for five years and must be renewed prior to expiry to maintain all classes. Once licensed, an individual can apply for a firearm transfer, and an authorization to transport, ATT, for restricted firearms. People may hunt with firearms in Canada only with non-restricted firearms, and this requires an additional hunting with firearms course. Businesses, museums, and organizations must have a valid firearms business license to possess, manufacture or sell firearms, restricted or prohibited firearms, prohibited devices, or prohibited ammunition. A license is not required to possess regular ammunition, but is required to manufacture or sell ammunition. A separate license is required for each location where the business operates and each business license is valid only for the activities specified on the license. Registering Firearms In order to be legally owned, a restricted or prohibited firearm must be registered in the Canadian Firearms Registry, which stores all data regarding firearms in Canada. To register a firearm into the system, a firearm must first be verified, its identification and classification being confirmed by an authorized verifier working with the RCMP. One must submit a registration application, which can be done online. If the firearm is being transferred from one owner to another the process can be done by telephone. 
Firearm registration certificates do not expire and do not need to be renewed. The Canadian Firearms Registry Online, CFRO, is accessible to police through CPIC. Public Agents Firearms Regulations, which took effect on October 31, 2008, require public service agencies to report all firearms in their possession. Agency firearms are those used by employees, i.e. service firearms, while protected firearms are those that have been found or seized or are otherwise being held. The timely reporting and sharing of information about protected firearms is particularly important for police as it will have a significant impact on investigators' efforts to monitor the locations, movement and distribution of illicit firearms in Canada. Canadian Firearms Program There are four major areas within the Canadian Firearms Program, which are managed by the Deputy Commissioner Policing Support Services, PSS. Firearms Administration Centre for licensing, registration, customer service and operations. Firearms Investigative and Enforcement Services Directorate, who assist police in countering illegal movement and criminal use of firearms. Strategic Integration and Program Management Services, Program Support Policy, Research and Planning, Business Management. Partnership and Outreach, Communications, Client-slash-Partner and Stakeholder Relationship. The CFP offers a wide variety of investigational support services to police. Firearms Reference Table, FRT, is a comprehensive firearms database with over 130,000 entries which establishes a systematic, standard method of identifying, describing, and classifying firearms. Firearms Identification, for questionable firearms. Firearms Analysis, for potential evidence in crimes. Tracing of Illicit Firearms, the Canadian National Firearm Tracing Centre, CNFTC, assists police in tracing illegal firearms. Investigational support and assistance helps police in preparing, obtaining and executing search warrants, location search and seizure, exhibit identification and organization and court preparation. Expert Firearms Advice and Witness provides firearm-related guidance for testimony and court preparation and acts as liaison with partner agencies that can provide these services. Firearm Case Law Database Firearm-related cases can be researched, and are distributed to investigators. Crown Attorney Program Working with Crown Attorney Offices, a network that specializes in firearms investigations. Firearms Operations and Enforcement Support FOES, intelligence support to firearm investigators and research that identifies trends and patterns in the criminal use of firearms in Canada. Pricing of illicit firearms, a record of firearm street prices is maintained and the information is made available to investigators. Access to specialized firearms information databases, Canadian Firearm Information System, CFIS, Canadian Integrated Ballistic Identification Network, CYBIN, and the Suspect Gun Database. Training, lectures, conferences, outreach and learning material available across Canada are available on a broad range of topics involving firearms. Firearms Registration Information, querying records contained within the Canadian Firearms Registry Online, CFRO. Public Agent Firearms Reporting Assistance, helping public agents use the Public Agency Web Services, PWS to report agency and protected firearms and assisting public agents understand their obligations under the Public Agents Firearms Regulations. Laws and Regulations Prohibited Devices Replica firearms, i.e., any device that is designed or intended to exactly resemble, or to resemble with near precision, a firearm and that itself is not a firearm, but does not include any such device that is designed or intended to exactly resemble, or to resemble with near precision, an antique firearm. Suppressors, i.e., a device or contrivance designed or intended to muffle or stop the sound or report of a firearm. Handgun barrels that are 105 mm, 4.1 in, and under, excluding barrels of pistols used in international sporting competitions governed by the rules of the International Shooting Union. Electrical or mechanical devices designed or adapted to render the trigger mechanism of a semi-automatic firearm to discharge in a fully automatic fashion. 
any rifle, shotgun, or carbine stock of the type known as the bullpup design, being a stock that, when combined with a firearm, reduces the overall length of the firearm such that a substantial part of the reloading action or the magazine well is located behind the trigger of the firearm when it is held in the normal firing position. I.e., only removable stocks are prohibited by this regulation, fixed stock firearms such as the FNP90 and IWI Tavor are excluded. Prohibited Ammunition Handgun ammunition designed to penetrate body armor, for example, KTW and THV round, 5.7x28 mm, excluding sporting rounds such as SS196SR and SS197SR. Incendiary or explosive ammunition designed for use in or in conjunction with a magazine and does not exceed 15 mm in diameter. Flechette rounds. Magazine capacity. Some magazines are prohibited regardless of the class of firearm to which the magazines are attached. As a general rule, under the criminal code, the maximum magazine capacity is five rounds for most magazines designed for rifles that shoot center fire in a semi-automatic fashion, or ten rounds for most handgun magazines. Magazines designed to contain center fire cartridges and designed or manufactured for use in a semi-automatic handgun are limited to ten cartridges. The capacity is measured by the kind of cartridge the magazine was designed to contain. In some cases the magazine will be capable of containing more than 10 rounds of a different caliber, however, that is not relevant in the determination of the maximum permitted capacity. The maximum permitted capacity of a magazine is determined by the kind of firearm it is designed or manufactured for and not the kind of firearm that might actually use it. As a consequence, the maximum permitted capacity remains the same regardless of which firearm it might be used in. Example. The Marlin Camp Carbine chambered for .45 ACP uses magazines designed and manufactured for the M1911 pistol, therefore the 7 and 8 round capacities are permitted. A similar example is the 10 round capacity magazine for the Rock River Arms LAR-15 pistol, regardless of the kind of firearm it is actually used in. Many common magazines are manufactured to hold more rounds than law allows in Canada. These magazines must be permanently altered so they no longer hold more than the number of rounds allowed by law. Acceptable ways to alter a magazine are set out in the criminal code regulations. With the exception of the Ruger BX2525 round magazine, there is no limit to the magazine capacity for semi-automatic rimfire rifles or manually operated rifles or shotguns, i.e., lever action, pump action, or bolt action. Additionally, there are a few exclusions on magazine regulations for certain specific firearms. Magazines designed or manufactured for use in U.S. Rifle M1, Garand, including Springfield Armory, Breda, and Beretta M1 Garands. Magazines designed or manufactured for use in Charlton Rifle, Farquhar Hill Rifle, and Hewitt Automatic Rifle that are not reproductions. Drum-type magazines for .303 Lewis MK1, MK2, MK3, MK4, Lewis SS and .30 Savage Lewis, .303 Vickers MK1, MK2, MK3, MK4, MK4B, MK5, MK6, MK7, as well as Bren Light MG including MK1, MK2, MK3, MK4, and any variant or modified versions of them that are not reproductions. Stripper magazines for Hotchkiss model 1895, 1897, 1900, 1909, 1914, 1917 machine guns, including Hotchkiss, Enfield, No. 2, MK1 machine guns and any variant or modified versions of them that are not reproductions. Double drum type magazines designed or manufactured for use in MG13, MG15, MG-17, MG-34, T6-200, T6-220 machine guns and any variant or modified versions of them that are not reproductions. Ammunition belts, metallic or fabric, that are not a reproduction and was originally designed or manufactured for the purpose of feeding rounds into an automatic firearm of a type that was in existence before 1945. Semi-automatic handgun magazines that were manufactured before 1910. 
snail drum type magazines that were originally designed or manufactured for use in the Parabellum pistol or lugger, bore chart lugger, model 1900, 1902, 1904, Marine, 1904 06, Marine, 1904 08, Marine, 1906, 1908, 1908, Artillery, and any variant or modified version of them. Magazines that were originally designed or manufactured as an integral part of the Mauser C96, including Model 1895, 1896, 1902, 1905, 1912, 1915, 1930, 1931, M711 and M712 and any variant or modified version of them. Magazines that were originally designed or manufactured for use in the semi-automatic Webley and Scott, Model 1912 and 1915. Storage Non-restricted firearms must be unloaded and either made inoperable with a secure locking device, such as a trigger lock, or have bolts or bolt carriers removed, or securely locked in a sturdy container, cabinet, or room that cannot be easily broken into. Except if, 1, in areas where it is legal to fire a gun, non-restricted firearms needed for predator control can temporarily be left unlocked and operable, but they must be kept unloaded and all ammunition must be stored separately, and, 2, in wilderness areas, non-restricted firearms can be left unlocked and slash or operable, but must be left unloaded, ammunition may be kept nearby. Restricted firearms must be unloaded and either made inoperable with a secure locking device, such as a trigger lock, and securely locked in a sturdy container, cabinet, or room that cannot be easily broken into, or locked in a vault, safe, or room that was built or adapted for storing these types of firearms. For automatic firearms, the bolt, S, or bolt carrier, S, must be removed, if removable, and stored in a separate locked room that cannot be easily broken into. Ammunition Having ammunition kept in a location where it is not available for loading the firearm, unless both the firearm and its ammunition are securely locked up is recommended, however is not required. Transportation Non-restricted firearms left unattended in a car must be locked in the trunk or in a similar lockable compartment. If the vehicle does not have a trunk or compartment, the firearm must be placed out of sight inside the vehicle and the vehicle must be locked. Same rules apply for transport of replica firearms. Non-restricted firearms must be, transported unloaded, with the exception of muzzle-loading rifles, which can be transported loaded between hunting sites so long as the firing cap or flint is removed. Restricted and prohibited firearms must be, unloaded, made inoperable with a secure locking device, and locked in a sturdy container. Prohibited firearms must also have their bolts or bolt carriers removed, if removable. Display Non-restricted firearms must be unloaded and either made inoperable with a secure locking device, such as a trigger lock, or locked in a sturdy container, cabinet, or room that cannot be easily broken into. Restricted and prohibited firearms must be unloaded and made inoperable with a secure locking device such as a trigger lock, and securely attached to something that cannot be moved. The bolts or bolt carriers must be removed, if removable, and stored in a separate locked room that cannot be easily broken into. Ammunition Must not be displayed with a firearm that can discharge it. Public Agents Firearms Regulations When not in use, agency firearms and other controlled items must be Stored in a container, receptacle, vault, safe, or room. That is controlled by the public agency and kept securely locked, or in a dwelling place if authorized by the public agency. Other controlled items being stored in a dwelling place must be securely locked in a container or receptacle that cannot be easily broken into, unless the agency has provided other instructions in writing. By law. A potential customer must be 18 years of age or older to purchase a firearm or legally maintain possession of one. People under the age of 18 but over the age of May 12th procure a minor's license, 
which does not allow them to purchase a firearm but allows them to borrow a firearm unsupervised and purchase ammunition. Children under the age of 12 that are found to need a firearm to hunt or trap may also be awarded the minor's license. This is generally reserved for children in remote locations, primarily Aboriginal communities that engage in subsistence hunting. Registration Long gun registration is no longer required after Bill C-19 was passed and made into law. However, it was still required in Quebec until March 27, 2015, when the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that the destruction of long gun registry records was within the constitutional power of Parliament to make criminal law, denying the Quebec government's legal challenge and allowing for those records to be destroyed. The history of the long gun registry, on January 1, 2001, all firearms in Canada did have to be registered with the Canadian Firearms Registry. In early 2006, the Conservative Party of Canada became the largest party in the 39th Canadian Parliament, and the new government announced an amnesty period of one year, later extended by a further year, in which licensed or previously licensed long gun owners would not be punished for not registering their long guns. The legal requirement to register as set forth by law has not been revoked. Legislation to revoke the requirement to register long guns was introduced by the government during the 39th Parliament but was not brought to a vote. It was opposed by the opposition parties who together had a majority of seats in the House of Commons. Similar legislation was again brought forward in the form of Private Members Bill C-391 during the 40th Parliament but was narrowly defeated on September 22, 2010. During the 41st Parliament the newly formed Conservative majority government again introduced legislation to repeal the requirement to register non-restricted firearms and to destroy the registry database. Bill C-19 passed both the House and Senate and received royal assent on April 5, 2012. The repeal of the long gun registry had been a long-standing campaign promise of the Conservative Party. Restricted Firearms to purchase a handgun or other restricted firearm, a person must have a Restricted Possession and Acquisition License RPAL, for restricted firearms. Canada's federal laws severely restrict the ability of civilians to transport restricted or prohibited, grandfathered, firearms in public. Section 17 of the Firearms Act makes it an offense to possess prohibited or restricted firearms other than at a dwelling house or authorized location but there are two exceptions to this prohibition found in Sections 19 and 20 of the Act. Section 19 allows for persons to be issued an authorization to transport, or ATT, authorizing the transport of a firearm outside the home for certain purposes, such as for its transfer to a new owner, going to and from a range, a training course, repair shop, or gun show, or when the owner wishes to change the address where the firearm is stored. Such firearms must be transported unloaded, equipped with a trigger lock and stored in secure, locked containers. In rarer cases, Section 20 of the Act allows individuals to receive an authorization to carry, or ATC, granting permission to carry loaded restricted firearms or, Section 12, 6, prohibited handguns on their persons for certain reasons specified in the Act. These reasons are as follows. If the person is a licensed trapper and carries the firearm while trapping, if the person is in a remote wilderness area and needs the firearm for protection against wildlife, if the person's work involves guarding or handling money or other items of substantial value, or if the person's life is in danger and police protection is inadequate to protect him or her. It should be noted that the authorities almost never issue an ATC for the last reason, that is to say, because a person's life is threatened and police protection is inadequate. The vast majority of ATCs issued are to employees of armored car companies to allow carry of a company-owned firearm only while working. Legality of Self-Defense The issue of the legality of self-defense with a firearm in Canada has been the subject of controversy. While self-defense is legal, it is very restricted. The Criminal Code recognizes self-defense with a firearm. The Firearms Act provides a legal framework wherein an individual may acquire, possess, and carry a restricted or, a specific class of, prohibited firearm for protection from other individuals when police protection is deemed insufficient. This situation is extremely rare, the, 
publicly available version of the RCMP authorization to carry application refers only to protection of life during employment that involves handling of valuable goods or dangerous wildlife. While self-defense is rarely considered a legal reason for attaining a POW, the use of force with a firearm is legal as long as the accused can prove that his or her life was in danger. Sections 34 and 35 of the Criminal Code provide the legal framework of the use of force. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.